What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope you're having a great, great Saturday on this holiday weekend. I'm sure a lot of you are at the beach right now enjoying the weather. It's about 86 degrees where I'm at right now, and uh, I have been working my ass off trying to get the outdoor man cave, aka the zoo together, and um, I'm going out to pick up some more supplies, so I'm getting this sucker outfitted because I can't wait. I literally cannot wait to have whew, game day next week. I am, um, I'm not part of the doom and gloom that a lot of people have right now. I really am not part of that mixture right now because everybody has the Cowboys offensive line is going to be crap. Now, as far as Jason Peters goes, um, I was getting a bunch of flack because they said, man, you know, seven videos about Jason Peters. Well, you know, he's our shiny new piece if he ends up signing with the Cowboys and we have to understand how he's going to fit. Then, of course, I get crap because I end up doing videos talking about the Eagles and stuff. But, you know, we do have to play those guys twice a year, and we want to know everything we can about those jackasses. So, you know, at, at this point, there's nothing you can do uh, about worrying about what people think. Just do you and do the best you can. If people like it, great. If they don't, they don't. Uh, that's on them. But... Um, Apparently, um, at the moment, it looks like Jason Peters will become a Dallas Cowboy uh, officially Tuesday. Uh, Jerry Jones apparently liked what he saw. The physical went well. They uh, think that he'll be okay for the team. Now, here's the thing, and I pointed this out because a lot of people were like, oh, my God, here it is. We got a 40-year-old that's going to be a starting tackle. No. He probably won't be anywhere close to ready to actually touch the field until maybe week two at the very soonest or week three. The Cowboys are going to have the same plan together that they've had with like Anthony Barr bringing him back. The same plan that they're doing with Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup's on the active roster and stuff, but he ain't going to be playing week one. What they're doing is they're slowly bringing him back up, you know, going 50%, 60%, and so on to let the body start getting used to the pounding and the rigors uh, and the full speed instead of just saying, okay, let's go out here full speed and go, especially when you're 40. So he won't be ready to play until probably week three. And so what we have is the guys we have. It's going to be Tyler Smith. It's going to be um, Connor Williams. It's Connor McGovern. You know, Buck Biotish, Zach Martin, and uh, Terrence Steele. That's our offensive line. And it's going to be Josh Ball backing him up as the swing tackle. And it is what it is. But I will say one thing. It was interesting to me going back and listening to uh, the talking heads and their thoughts on our defense and how bad it was going to be this past year. You know, they literally said, you know, the Cowboys got no chance because that defense they have is awful. And that's not the first time that they've actually said that before because after the 2013 season, the Dallas Cowboys defense was but ugly. Um, that was one of the worst defenses the Cowboys had until 2021. We lost... After that season, DeMarcus Ware, Jason Hatcher, and Sean Lee. And so you would have expected that defense to be worse, but they actually went from 32nd to 19th and was second in the NFL taking the football away. So things change quickly in the NFL. But here's going to be the advantage that I'm going to say that the Dallas Cowboys actually are going to have on the offensive line. You know the old saying... Iron sharpens iron. Actually, in my workshop, it's, it's the wet grinders, actually. You know, the, the, the 700 grit wet grinder that actually sharpens my steel. But but you know the old saying. You know the saying, okay? I haven't actually tried sharpening any of my chisels with any iron. But be that as it may, if you 
believe that iron sharpens iron. That you get stronger because of working with great people. Here's the thing that people aren't going to take in consideration as far as our offensive line. And I don't think that people realize how good some of those guys are on that defensive line. If you liked Randy Gregory and thought that he was great, I'm going to tell you, having to deal with Sam Williams and his strength and speed is at another level. When that guy actually learns how to use his tools, he will become a monster. But not only him. I'm talking about working with D-Law, a guy who demands double and triple teams. And I'm talking about having to take Micah Parsons coming off the edge. If you practice against those, and some believe that Micah Parsons is definitely a top five defensive player. Some people believe that that guy could be the NFL defensive MVP. He's that good. If you have to practice against that guy, when you play games against regular players, shit, that stuff's easy. And that's one of those cases that they may actually be better than you think. Because even with our interior defensive line, I know they don't have the numbers and the reputation yet because they haven't been able to be out there enough. But Navelle Gallimore, you watch, that guy has one hell of a motor and has a lot of strength. He has, and, and go ahead and kill me, he is kind of like a Vita Vey. Not quite as big, but definitely as strong as he is. And when he starts pushing you around and practice and stuff, that gets you some real feel of competition that you're going to be facing. Um, Tristan Hill, who's been a guy who's been unblockable um, in training camp since the pancake blocking by Tyler Smith, um, who actually has had a really good training camp, you practice against a guy like that, that's going to make you even better too. So that's where I look at this and say, yeah, we got a lot of young guys. But a lot of these young guys, we actually haven't really seen them together as a unit on the field. And if Kellen Moore can understand things he can do to help his offensive line, using a tight end to chip on the way out, you know, of course, using the back in the backfield, Zeke Elliott, one of the best blocking running backs in football, using 12 personnel, the offensive line's going to be okay. In fact, I dare say, I think they're going to be better than what people think. And as far as Jason Peters, um, he's a lot better than a lot of the guys that we have as far as swing tackles. And I ain't mad about him getting signed by the Cowboys. All right, that's all I got for you. I'm going to do what I do. I'll go pick up some stuff, go back home, and do some more work here. Whew. And... Uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. All right. Well, damn. Whoa. Damn. Okay. Be careful out there. Shit happens.